Okay, so here I am, Roy Pitcock. My GS is being serviced, and today I get to ride that, the new R1250 GS. And I'm really excited. We've got Keith with me. I say hey Keith. <laughs> He's out there on the K100. And uh, we're out on it for about an hour. And I'm going to give you my initial impressions of this bike. And I'm going to be following Keith. <laughs> so, here she is. What a stunning bike she is too. If I was to go for uh, the GS to replace the GSA, I think I would lean more towards the uh, the rally version because I'm just uh, I'm a fan of the spokes and all that jazz. Oh, instantly it feels lighter straight away. Look at that screen. Very slick. Wow. Whoa. There was no jolt. It went straight into first. That's a very weird sensation. Normally there's that uh, clunk um, going into first. Wow, that screen is something impressive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, no worries. But look at it, yeah, very slim. Again, no jolt. You're going left. Wow. Oh, she feels so good. Instant impressions, yeah, smooth. And, uh, and compact. Literally jumping off the uh, GSA straight onto this. It's uh, it feels really really compact, which I something I wasn't expecting. And I I'm gonna have to take it in a little bit first. That screen is something else. It's so intuitive. It's got all that information there. No uh, no squinting to make out the dials. Although I uh, I'm a fan of dialogue. Uh, or traditional clocks. It is a bit of a strain to make out the numbers on the uh, on the GS because they are very small. But this, look at it. I can see why Teapot One has a sticker on the front. It's very clear indeed uh, what's going on. But yeah, I'm a I'm a fan straight away. The gearbox is buttery smooth. I think it is as it would have been covered in so many other videos and other reviews from professional journalists. It's the, li it's the little differences. They've, they've built on that platform to make it just that little bit better. Always striving to be that little bit better. The uh, power has been increased, as I'm sure you all know, to 136 brake horsepower from the 124 that the predecessor had. And with that comes uh, an increase in torque. But I think it's all about the delivery with the, the shift cam technology and variable valve systems that they've got going on. I think the, all the clever stuff is going to be under the skin because the cosmetics are very, very subtle. But uh, the, the sensation, the, the feeling you get when on this is that you're on something very special. Yeah, you, you can tell you're on a premium bike, you know, a premium product. And I just love this interface. I love the, uh, the possibilities uh, that this will allow you to do when I'm riding. I mean, look at it. Oh, how beautiful is this? Oh, get that quick shifter. It's so good. I'm thoroughly enjoying this. What a piece of kit. 
and I'm loving the, how thin the tank is. I know I'm going to grab it on about that, but coming from a, a GS where it's, uh, sorry, a GS Adventure, I have to clarify, that tank is a monster. So having something a little bit more uh, low profile does make a world of difference. Um, out of preference though, I'm not keen on the uh, the seat on the, the standard GS. I, I, I can't get on board with it. The, the, the Adventure version variant of that is uh, a lot more comfortable for me. So the, if I was to go for this, this bike, it would have to be the uh, Rally where it has that option. Yeah. You know, it has that uh, bench seat, that single, uh, sorry, that single rider seat that I probably would opt for. But uh, it's so light and nimble. What a day for a ride. Beautiful day. So there's a, a wealth of information about this machine. A bunch of stats, and I'm not going to be able to rattle them all off, but I'll be able to provide you with that information on screen which I'll uh, put up right now. And uh, there is also, you know, a bunch of other detailed reviews. But this is all about this for me. Getting a feel of the bike. Oh my gosh, it shifts. Oh, straight away. You can feel that power. Oh, <laughs> I'm only in fourth. Crikey. Oh, so good. I'll let Keith go by. As he's uh, leading, technically speaking. Hey, I've got that bike. <laughs> Look at that, the power station almost looks majestic over there. Yeah, um, I'm just going to give you an overall initial feeling from a GSA and BMW fan point of view on the new 1250 and uh, yeah the initial impressions are very very positive I mean the amount of technology and development that's gone into this machine is just crazy it makes something that feels uh, fresher and newer over the last incarnation which isn't actually that old you know what mine is a 2017 uh, GS adventure and you know it's not an old bike by any stretch of the imagination, but the uh, uh, oh, it's telling me that my it needs fuel. <laughs> so that's not good. Well, it should it should be enough. I've got 40 miles. But yeah, as I was saying, my bike is far it's far from being old or redundant. But the things that they've tweaked just ever so slightly to make this machine, you know, that bit more smoother. A little bit more powerful and it you know it does pay off but it is an extremely expensive piece of kit which begs the question is it worth upgrading or is it worth changing up or indeed when they're shopping around for a, a new bike you know GS being on the on the wish list should you go for the 1250 or maybe look at cheaper second-hand uh, 1200s as uh, there will be an abundance of them with people upgrading because honestly, I don't think I don't think there's not much of a huge difference. I mean, from a GS owner point of view, a 1200 is a massive, a bigger enough leap. You know, to think right, that's it. I need to get the new bike. I don't think there is. But don't get me wrong. I mean, if all someone offered me this bike, I'd definitely be jumping, jumping at the chance. And it's something to aim for. Maybe when I'm in the market to up, you know to, to upgrade my bike, but it's certainly something I wouldn't be doing immediately. And when I do get to the point, uh, the point where I'm going to be uh, changing, changing up bikes, I might go down to the uh, the used route, as I've just said, because there is nothing wrong with the 1200 GS. 
or the 1200 GS Rally or GS Adventure. <laughs> the power of this thing is incredible. It's intoxicating. And it's so smooth! <laughs> but that gearbox, man! You d it just goes through those... Ah, oh, it's just like it's not there. Effortless. What a cool bit of kit this is. Yeah, I'm a fan. I am a fan. <laughs> I've got to admit it. I am a fan of the GS. And I'm okay with that. Because it's a bike that does everything so well. And this screen. I just thought. I haven't even noticed uh, any buffeting. I'm wearing my Arai X4 right now with the peak. And uh, there's no buffeting whatsoever on this dual carriageway or motorway. I have not noticed the difference between my large screen. And I thought I would. So that's a big plus. It's extended to its fullest position. So uh, that uh, gives you a lot more protection than I initially thought. So that's a big thumbs up. This is really cool by the way, riding with Keith. It's the first time I've ever done this. It's cool seeing that K100 on the road. And this is a lovely way to spend an afternoon in the sun. And this is a very comfortable place to be. I even kind of like the paint job on this. <laughs> Look at this screen man, it's so good. It's the, the first time I've ridden on a bike with a TFT screen. And I think you can tell, can't you? <laughs> you know, as much as uh, you're a fan, you could be a fan of the dialogue. This has got so many applications, you know, you can got so much stuff you can do with this. And it's just simpler and more clear, which makes all the difference when, uh, when riding. I'm uh, really impressed with the screen. I really am. I th uh, when I saw how small it was, I, I instantly thought that's not going to give any uh, real protection. On, uh, on the motorway or dual carriageway or anything like that. How wrong I am! Because compared to the, the one on the GS, it is uh, a lot smaller. But like I said, no buffeting whatsoever. Very smooth. I'm, uh, I'm six foot, um, by the way, and uh, obviously, like I've said, wearing the Arai X4 with a peak. And uh, yeah, big thumbs up on that one. I feel that the riding position on the regular GS is in a bit more um, of a tucked position. And what I mean by that is that your legs are a little bit further back. Um, and I think that is down to the seat, the rider seat being uh, lower than, uh, than the, the Adventure. So I'm a little less comfortable on this bike than I am on my, uh, my Adventure. Hence why my preference to the, to the Rally uh, version of this model. But other than that, you know, that's not a fault of the bike, that's a, a fault of my, my body. <laughs> but the smile factor for me on this thing is, uh, is is really, really high. Oh man, Keith is booking it, look at he's gone. I have to play catch up. I think I'm going to have to take uh, the Adventure out as well, as a like for like comparison, just uh, for my own uh, my own curiosity. Always get stuck behind a van. Can't see you, Keith. I hope you're there. Oh, there he is. Look at that, smooth as you like. So light in comparison to the Adventure. <laughs> but that's the instant thing for me. It's the weight. I don't know if it's psychological or if it's fact, but uh, I notice the difference with the weight. Now the uh, the engine, you, you can't tell. You can't tell that it's a as in there's any difference with the uh, uh, with the variable variable valve system or the camshift system kicks in. It's uh, like riding any other GS in my mind, but with that smooth factor kicked in, uh, you, you'll hear that word smooth so much kicking around when talking about the new 1250s. And um, sadly, that is the best word because they are buttery smooth. So much torque and uh, really smooth. Gearbox, slick, you know, as much as you want to hate these bikes, because there are a lot of haters out there, it is really good, you know? And that's the reason why they sell so well. The guys at the cell, oh, how nice is that? The guys at the cell room were telling me all the stuff that you can do with the screen. 
I'm really sorry, I'm all over the place with this. I'm just trying to put it together the best, the best I can. Uh, so it's not in any kind of order. It's just, as I said, initial impressions on a an, one hour test ride. So you don't get long. But big thanks to uh, Roy Pitcock for, uh, in Long Eaton for uh, letting me take the bike out. It is a fantastic bit of kit. But would I take, would I take in my bike right now? for one of these I don't think I would you know I don't think that's uh, I mean other than that screen which I'm a big fan of it's not enough uh, for me to, to change up just yet yet <laughs> but I'm pleased to see that or feel or uh, that the, the bike is just brilliant it's everything that you would expect it to be but anyway back to the point uh, I was just saying um, the nice guy at the, the sales room was telling me all about the things that this uh, screen can do, this uh, TFT screen, which I think is the best currently on the market in regards to uh, interfaces and l uh, layout and all the rest of it. But uh, you can also have a turn-by-turn -turn, uh, sat-nav approach, if you like, uh, next to your speedo and details like that, which is good, but it's not really what you're looking for because you've still got this. Uh, the uh, place for the nav uh, 6 I think it is now which uh, I, I just can't get past the glaringly obvious issue with that you know it's we've got this wonderful color slick TFT screen oh here we go <laughs> and uh, yet yeah, we still have to have a third party Garmin device for the sat nav why wasn't it fully integrated? You know, I just don't get it. Surely that would have been possible. Not just turn by turn, but a fully integrated sat nav with this wonderful screen. And it's been mentioned on other reviews, like the guys from uh, Ridercam TV. Is it a cash grab from BMW to make you buy the 600 pound, yes, 600 pound better kit that is the Nav 6? And part of me thinks it is. Um, I think they're right. I think it is a cash grab to keep making you buy extra bits of kit um, but the optimist in me we'd like to think it's because it's still in development you know that you know to keep things in budgets and uh, make things work efficiently as possible they just didn't have the time to develop uh, the sat nav option built in at this point but I'm sure that's going to be coming very soon with things like this and with everything else that this thing can do with its pairing options to your uh, to your phone and the uh, media and all that kind of stuff so yeah no doubt that that will be on its way this is a cracking route by the way by Keith really enjoying it I just hope I can get back on the the fumes I've got in the tank <laughs> and it just flip it just plop I can't get my words out flip plop it just leans into these corners you can really really get into them it's just brilliant as does the my GS Adventure for such a big bike you just don't realize how flickable it is you know and how much fun it is i'm stoked i really am i'm stoked that i've got to ride this bike and i'm stoked that it's uh, as good as uh, as they they say and i mean it certainly hasn't got any worse but as i've said i'm conflicted a bit because it is it as good to warrant me to trade in my bike right now no it's not so yeah, I'm just going to sit back for a while and, and see where they go with the bike. Who knows, next year they might be bringing out a uh, different variant or version or what have, what have you. But if you're looking for a, a do-everything bike that can tour, commute, make you smile, and you've got, a, I guess, about 18 grand to, uh, to drop, then look no further than the GS. I mean, it's, uh, there are the other bikes in this class, like the KTM, uh, 1290 adventure I believe then there's the Triumphs offering the Tiger Tiger Explorer the Yamaha Tenere and T7 even though it's a smaller capacity Africa Twin I guess and then uh, the, then Ducati so there's a lot out there and uh, you know the Ducati offering is a lot more than this but um, I you know I'm just a sucker for the, for the GS I think it's just it's so confidence inspiring you can get on this thing and literally go anywhere it's like a ticket to uh you know to wherever you want to go in comfort 
in style, all the rest of it, all the other cliches you can think of. <laughs> I am totally driveling on here. I terrible. Now I'm in fifth gear right now, and I'm just plowing along here. This is just it, the torque. It's just incredible. It doesn't matter where I'm going with the uh, with the power and what gear. It just keeps on giving. It's just phenomenal. This is a much better route than the last time I went there for a test ride. <laughs> Such a slick bit of kit. Oh yeah. It's quieter, I think, too. I think the engine itself, it doesn't have that familiar boxer noise, you know. I, I, and I'm a big fan of it. But it sounds smoother, you know. The whole thing. Again, using that word, smooth. I apologise. I'm so sorry. I can't think of a better word. The brakes feel great, too. I, I, I'm a bit funny like that, though, with the brakes. That's another area that uh, got me a bit. Dropping a lot of money on a bike like this. Uh, I, I'm just a bit disappointed they haven't got Brembo's because it's nice having Brembo's, you know? It's a name that you know and trust and recognise, as do other bikers. And having um, their own brand on them is a bit of a shame. Oh, it's so smooth. That's that word again, honestly. So look, more temporary traffic lights. Yeah, I think uh, the things I'm going to take away from this is the weight difference, because although it's still a, a big bike, there is a significant difference for me in the weight. The smoothness of the gearbox, the effectiveness of the small screen, because that's really surprised me, and the smoothness of the power delivery and the engine. It's just, they're the, the key things. And, uh, and that's, that, uh, use your words, Blake. That screen, well done, Beamer. Done it again. <laughs> wow, the brakes are well good. So whatever reservations I've got about what the sticker says on the, on those calipers has no bearing on the stopping power. That's the thing with the GS is, it's the price. I think that's the thing that you uh, have to come to terms with. It's a, a lot of money, but you get a lot of bike for it. It's one of those things you have to experience it. When I rode the uh, this bike, actually, the uh, as in the, the the 1200 GS. When I rode the 1200 GS from coming off a uh, fat bob for the very first time, it was like a new dawn had rose or something. It was night and day. And I know, obviously, there's two very different types of bike two very different types of manufacturer but both of which are considered premium brands and both have very expensive bikes in their lineup <clears throat> and when you get on something like this it just blows your mind how good everything works how smooth everything is how slick uh, everything can be and how intuitive everything can be and uh, that's what you're getting for your money I believe anyway Yes, there's lots of other bikes out there that do really do... Oh, look at the horses! Oh, that was incredible! Hey, horses! That was fantastic! Yes, there are many other bikes out there that do phenomenal jobs out on the road and performance-wise, uh, economically, and all the rest of it. But um, I, I think if you want the best, most cases you have to pay for that uh, privilege and um, I think the GS is uh, one of those cases. I think BMW has spent a very, very long time developing this bike and uh, they're very proud of uh, what it stands for and uh, as a result the, uh, the price you pay for it is the yeah, represents that and I know I'm going on a bit of a sermon here but <clears throat> and it's something I've had to come to terms with from having bought one and uh, but that's the way I, I, I can deal with it yeah it's great it really is oh we're going to Bunny we're heading towards Bunny I think which is particularly cool because my old man was born in Bunny if you're watching this one, Dad, check it out. 
<laughs> Riding the new 1250 GS through the town of your birth. Oh yeah. <laughs> Here we are, we're in Bunny. Where the bunnies come from. Got 18 miles left in the tank. Will we make it? a great bit of kit without a shadow of a doubt <clears throat> if you're even remotely curious about the GS get to your local dealer and take one out because it is a game changer <laughs> so much fun Well, I really sincerely hope you enjoyed that brief ride with me on the new R1250GS. Apologies for my ramblings, but I got really, as you can imagine, excited about riding the bike. And I hope I've managed to portray a little bit about uh, both the good things and the bad things about the bike on my initial impressions. And uh, again, I'd like to thank the good guys at, uh, well, look at that, Big Jalopy. The guys at Roy Pitcock for uh, arranging this for me. I really appreciate it. It's a great dealership uh, based in Long Eaton. Good coffee too, and tea. <laughs> and uh, always very friendly and helpful. And as I mentioned before, if you're remotely interested in the GS, get down to your uh, local dealership and uh, see if you can take one out ASAP because as soon as you uh, get on one you'll get it you'll just understand why they're so popular I'm so grateful I had uh, Keith with me uh, on this ride today for uh, showing me around and giving us that fantastic uh, fantastic route I think we're a little bit late bringing the bike back but I'm hope they won't be too mad at me after all I have put fuel back in the bike <laughs> and here we are Roy Pidcock What a machine. Utterly brilliant. Good stuff. Okay, so there's the bike all serviced. Looking all pretty. And uh, I've literally just got off. I can't remember like usually words. I've literally just got off the R1250 GS. I'm going to get back onto mine. And I, I think all in all, all things considered, I'm more excited about getting back on this, which is a weird feeling. As great as that bike was, so the proof is in the pudding. Oh yeah, instantly feel at home on this. But it's kind of to be expected. It's my bike. <laughs> wow. Straight away, just instantly more comfortable on the adventure. It's just very clear to me that uh, the standard GS is just not a good fit uh, for my, uh, for me, as uh, the way I'm put together. Very much more at home on the, the bigger bike. But I was saying to the guys, if uh, I was to get the uh, GS, as in the, the regular one, it would be the uh, rally variant. So in my mind, taking all the best bits from the adventure. It is proper toaster, you know. 17 and a half degrees and it's February. But that was a whole lot of fun. 
really enjoyed it. Great experience. And the other thing I just instantly uh, noticed, if it wasn't outside of the, the weight, was that uh, I could flat foot that bike. Most of my feet were flat on the ground. And on the GS, I'm on the balls of my feet. So just a little, it's just like, you know, all those little things add up. So there's a lot to think about there. I mean, it's not something I'm going to run out tomorrow and pick up, but uh, it's something to mull over over the next 12 months when I'm potentially back on the market for a new bike. So there we are. I hope you enjoyed that. I certainly did. And uh, we'll be back again real soon with more content. If you enjoyed what you saw, please subscribe. It really helps as well as give us a thumbs up. Until the next time, ride safe. Bye-bye.